made something wild. He followed it with Married to the Mob, unless I'm missing something out. Mm -hmm. Now, what in those two films gave someone the idea that you'd be the right man for Silence of the Lambs? Um, I think the reason that um, the, um, uh, the people that were running Orion Pictures at the time, um, Eric Pleskow, Arthur Krim, Mike Medavoy, Bill Bernstein, I think they, they saw what a hard worker I was. I think they thought that I had a gift for filmmaking. Um, I was bringing these films in on budget and they were good pictures. And um, I think that they just felt that um, we had a relationship going, that um, the time had come to, to, uh, for them to trust me with uh, this new book. Of course, at the time, nobody knew, I didn't know, or the people at Orion didn't know that, that Silence of the Lambs had the potential for being such a big success. Uh, we, we thought it had a, the potential for being a very strong movie that could hopefully do well at the box office. So, um, but uh, uh, yeah, I had no qualifications for thrillers, but I think they, they knew how much I loved actors and what have you. So happily, they gave me the opportunity. Do you know who Gene Hackman was supposed to play in the Gene Hackman version, which never happened? Well, Gene Hackman, as I understand it, was meant to direct Silence of the Lambs. This was gonna be his directorial debut. Whether or not he intended on playing um, either Jack Crawford or Dr. Lecter, I don't know. Um, but I do know that I've been told that his daughter, when she read the book, spoke very forcefully to Mr. Hackman um, about the fact that he should not make such a dark film. And for wh whether that was the reason or others, he withdrew. And that's why it became available for somebody, some other lucky person like myself. I mean, did you, when you were first offered it, did you go, yeah, this is for me or not? Oh, no. I, I in fact, I read the, they sent me the book because uh, Ted Talley was working on the screenplay, but it wasn't finished yet. I read it and I saw, I felt this is a great book, great book, um, very deep, very intense, um, very rich in character and story and theme. Um, and I think we can make a terrific movie about it. And I, I love thrillers. I'd always wanted to do a thriller. So, oh, I had no hesitation whatsoever. I thought it was an amazing opportunity for me as a director. It turned out to be, didn't it? It did indeed. <laughs> Were Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster first casting choices? Um, my first casting choice for um, Clary Starling was Michelle Pfeiffer, who I just made Married to the Mob with and had a great experience with. And I knew how gifted uh, Michelle was, is. So she was my first choice. And Michelle was quite interested, but then um, she would, withdrew her interest because of the darkness of the piece. And uh, then I had recently seen a couple of Meg Ryan films and um, had offered the script to Meg Ryan. And she was horrified by the subject matter. And at the same time, Jodie Foster um, made her interest in the part known to Orion and to me. And I met with Jodie Foster a few times and happily uh, uh, wound up, uh, we went, wound up going forward together. Uh, for the part of Dr. Lecter, um, my first thought had been Sean Connery because I felt that he, he had that keen mind, um, which is obviously vital for Dr. Lecter, one of the most brilliant characters uh, uh, that we've ever seen in films. And also, I, uh, uh, Sean Connery's physicality, I thought would be very, very strong. And also, um, I think we were used to seeing Sean Connery in good guy parts. So there's a, his, his persona is kind of permeated by a sense of goodness. And I wanted that very much for Dr. Lecter. I wanted there to be a strong sense of a good person, a good, brilliant person somehow gone terribly wrong. Um, he passed on it, um, didn't like the part. And uh, that's when I, it occurred to me that um, Anthony Hopkins had played one of the most brilliant positive humanistic characters I had ever seen in films in David Lynch's Elephant Man. So I sent the script to Anthony Hopkins. He loved it. And we very quickly moved forward there as well. At which point in the uh, process did you realize that this was bigger than anyone could really have expected? Um, <clears throat> well, I think through the whole process of making Signs of the Lambs, it was just trying to make the film as good as possible. There were really no expectations and uh, beyond um, hoping that we had made a film uh, worthy of everybody's hard work. And I guess it, uh, you know, I was shocked when the film was number one and I was shocked 
week after week that it remained for many, many weeks in the number one position. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and then later when uh, you know, it started receiving some awards and what have you, it was wonderful, but it, it was all, you know, uh, uh, nothing, nothing that happened afterwards really compared in a way with the experience of making that film with those actors, with that crew. We had an extraordinary group of filmmakers gathered together with a great cast, and we made a film that was you know, just a, a thrill to make. And so everything else is gravy.